The Strange Case of Perfection. I've been noticing lately that I've been, and others around me have been, pointing out how perfect things are, or that some event or drama was, quote, perfect, end quote. Sometimes it's done with a tone of irony or even cynicism and sarcasm, and yet this underlying truth remains. Everything is perfect the way it is. Oddly and ironically to me, this flies directly in the face of what being human has been all about. We are tool makers. We are strivers. We are dreamers. If everything is perfect, why use tools? Why strive for any goal? Why dream? I believe the answer is that, as humans, we also have the habit of judgment. We judge this to be bad and that to be good, usually without much thought as to why we feel that way. And any justification usually comes after the judgment has been made. I've come to believe that there is nothing really inherently wrong with judgment other than it prevents the perception of perfection. If we want to play the game of judging whether or not this person's behavior is reprehensible or that chocolate cream pie is the best food in the world, hey, knock yourself out. It's a choice, though, because I can agree or disagree about what is reprehensible behavior or what is the best food. Likewise, seeing perfection is a choice, much like happiness is a choice, and I think the two are related. I've also come to believe that much of what is wrong in the world is the inability to see the perfection of it over time. Hindsight always gives us that advantage of context when events happen that, at the moment, seem just plain wrong. Perhaps that perception that leads to the judgment that something's wrong or bad is just nature's way of telling us to wait and see. The famous story of the Zen monk, or farmer, or cowboy, who with every turn of events declares, we'll see, illustrates this point. A boy on his 16th birthday gets a horse. Everybody in the village says, how wonderful, the boy got a horse. And the Zen master says, we'll see. Two years later, the boy falls off his horse and breaks his leg. Everyone in the village says, oh, how terrible. And the Zen master says, we'll see. Then a war breaks out, and all the young men have to go off and fight, except the boy can't because his legs are all messed up. And everybody in the village says, how wonderful. Then the Zen master says, we'll see. This is a commentary on the cosmic wisdom of the big picture. The bigger the picture, the more perfection comes into view. So I tend to want to suspend judgment in the moment, opting to wait and see where the story of perfection is leading me. To the question of everything is perfect and why do, be, or have anything, the answer is that if your actions are only the result of correcting some bad or unwanted condition, then you are condemned to a life of disappointment and non-fulfillment because there is always something more to achieve or something more, something else to fix. Why not live simply to create? Create your life to be a really cool sculpture or paint your life as a vision of the highest version of your divinity. Instead of correcting some perceived lack or insufficiency, why not just create what you envision? I believe that's why we're here. No judgment, although that's okay. No fixing, although that's fine too. But just create something wonderful, something unique to you, something that gives you joy. Why do anything else? You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Help Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.